18 days of animation, day two. Hello, people. This is Illotalk, and I am Corey Kerr. And for the next 18 days, I am producing an animation. And I'm going to spend a minimum of an hour every day, catalog my progress on this vlog here, and uh, I will be doing major milestones. So uh, what I've done in the past is kind of been doing it out of order, and this time I'm going to do it in order. Where I'm going to do rough sketches, which I talked about yesterday, um, storyboards, animatics, rough animation, final animation. Today, I spent most of my time doing something that I thought was kind of strange, but I needed to figure it out. A big part of what it is that I'm doing here, and I'll just show you here like this, a big part of what I'm doing here is I have some tentacles that are going to come down and they're going to grab something and I experimented a little bit with how tentacles will look and I guessed wrong. So you can see in the lower left there, I was kind of like trying to figure out how I wanted them to look, but I was kind of thinking like a heavy rope, like a big heavy wet rope. And it was just kind of whipped down kind of like, you know, and uh, actually I watched today. I watched a lot of videos on um, octopus, octopuses, not octopi, apparently. Um, squids, cuttlefish, things with tentacles. And what I saw was a lot different than what I imagined. And so I like to do this stuff fairly realistic. And so what I saw was I was seeing stuff that was like unraveling, unrolling. And the challenge that I have with tentacles is that they are three-dimensional and on one side, they're kind of a tapering cylinder, um, except one side is a little bit flat. And on that flat side, they've got suckers. Those suckers are in rows of offset two. Um, and, and I've always known that, but then I always assumed that they moved differently. And in fact, the way that I'm seeing them move is they roll up with the suckers out and then unroll kind of like, and then as they move and they get really small at the end, as they're moving at the end, those smaller bits tend to curl and whip around as they're trying to, almost like they're feeling things out. Anyway, this poses some significant challenges because what I've typically done in animation is 2D animation or 2.5D animation. 2.5D animation is where you have flat objects moving in 3D space. So you have 2D objects in a 3D space, and so it's called 2.5D. Um, I've never done traditional animation where I'm drawing frame by frame, and I don't think I have time to do tra traditional animation for this as well. And so I have spent today trying to figure out some workarounds and some ways that I can do it. And I'm gonna experiment tomorrow with some of these things. Um, one is I, I just do side views um, I was hoping to have it kind of like, you know, drop in and have these two fingers kind of come at you a little bit and get some of that kind of foreshortening to kind of add some depth. Um, what I found with some experiments that I was doing is that I can't put a pin in 3D space. And so when having... There, there's two main ways to animate in After Effects. One is you, um, you use the puppet pin, which will create a triangle mesh and you move those pins around and it, it warps and bends things and stretches them in between those two pins or three pins or five pins or whatever. Um, those pins don't move in Z space. They don't move towards or away from the viewer. Uh, the other way to do it is a stiffer way of doing it where you are articulating joints and in between each joint is stiff. Um, I could do joint articulation and just have pieces unfold, but I feel like that would feel kind of stiff, though I think I might be able to do it quick enough that maybe nobody will notice. Um, but the problem with the the problem with the puppet pin is that I can't have it coming towards you because I wanted it to kind of come towards you. Um, so, th so those are those are two issues I'm having. The other thing is I don't know how to do 3D animation. So, 
those are those are some problems that I've got. One thing that I was thinking though that I could do is I could have something in three a, a flat object curve around something and then mask it so that the mask reveals that flat object. And as the mask is revealing that flat object, I, I've kind of envisioned a little asterisk um, in three dimensions. So I take two or three um, things that look like the silhouette of a sucker, and then I, I kind of spin them like this, and then I just rotate those. So I put those on the edges. So as, the, as this mask is revealing, you'll see this little asterisk of suckers rotating because you, if it's a silhouette, you would really only see it on the, on the bottom edges of those curves. So just a few, a few things like that that I'm kind of imagining might work. Um, the other option is doing a shape tween and a shape tween is a little bit trickier, but basically I would get very detailed in my storyboards, then I would create those major shapes in Illustrator. And if you do that correctly, you can copy and paste those anchor points and paths onto a mask on a shape layer in After Effects, and it will shape tween between those things. There's a couple things that you have to do to make sure that that works really uh, well. And one of them is that if you draw in Illustrator with the pen tool and you go counterclockwise, I just did, anyway, everything has to be counterclockwise. So if you're going, if each shape, because what will happen is After Effects will order the, the anchor points in the order that they were created. So if you create the thing counterclockwise, it'll create counterclockwise. Another thing that really helps is to have the exact number of anchor points on each shape and then each anchor point will just move. So those are the three major things that I'm considering doing. I'm going to play with the shape tween one tomorrow. I might experiment a little bit with the spinning asterisk thing. Anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. So not a ton of progress. It's still like kind of in the experimental stage of like trying to figure out what assets I need to build. And so even in this rough stage, I'm, I'm going back and forth between like, is this even possible in the software? And if it isn't, then I need to storyboard it differently. Um, anyway, so day two and I have reached a, a major setback in my skill level and knowledge of what I want and what I can do, there is a giant gap. So in the next day or two, I need to close that gap. That's basically what I've got. That's basically what is going on on uh, day two of 18. So thanks for watching. You can always catch my stuff at coreykerr.com. And uh, if you haven't yet, like and subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified what's going on. If you would like to watch me go through this process, I will be doing a video every single day of what it is that I'm working on and recording what I'm doing. I will do five major videos. Uh, when I finish a particular milestone, I will explain what that milestone is and I will put those five videos in a different things. And so those five things are to do your rough sketches, your storyboard, your animatic, your rough animation, and your final animation. I'll be going through each one of those stages as I go through this project. I will be doing that in 18 days for an hour a day. So check that out. If you're new here, consider looking at stuff. That's all I've got. We'll catch you guys later. I'm out.